What I'd like to do today is try to explain to you what this new material uh, that I call magic molding is. Best I can describe it, it's a new substrate. It is made from a, um, a type of copolymer combination that is virtually the same as what a water bottle is made of. Uh, it could be even um, directly in contact with food, it's no problem. It's perfectly benign, it has no active chemicals in it, it's neutral pH. And I wanted to use something like this so that it could be used in archival situations. Beyond that, I wanted something that was flexible and that, that I could manipulate and do lots of things with. As far as tools, I wanted to minimize the types of tools that were required to work with molding. This is virtually a transparent rabbit. Rabbit is not something that runs, but rabbit is is what picture frame molding have that make them different from other kinds of moldings and that's this little empty space in here with a conventional wood frame. This is the rabbit and fortunately um, the rabbits in these wood frames don't go far enough out so you can do lots of things with them and everything is fixed. They're not designed really for lay or crafts people to work with. These are made of wood or, or metal and usually you gotta have lots of specialized equipment to work with them. I wanted something that could work both with this kind of conventional material and go beyond what this does. This rabbit is actually the shape of a rabbit on the outside as well as on the inside. So in fact, you could put it right inside a conventional picture frame that has a rabbit and you could glue this in and on the face side and you can color this any colors you want and it would actually be an improvement. So I needed it to be really thin so you could actually take the materials or glass and art and so on out of a frame, do something like this with it and then put it back in there. What makes it really unique though is that there's grooves that are all along the surface of this side as well as all along the surface of this side. And what those grooves allow the molding to do, it allows it to bend and flex along a straight line. It'll hold that shape as long as you want it to. And if you didn't want it to go this way, we could have just as easily put it in this direction. And if you didn't want the bend at all, if you made a mistake, you can just take it right out and it's back to where it was. You can bend this lots and lots of times and it won't break. It's really, really strong, although you can cut it and manipulate it with normal household tools. You take a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife and you can cut this. For example, if you wanted to cut it. There you go, it's cut, okay. Now, from that cut, that allows this side to bend. And it'll, again, you can bend this lots of times and it won't break. So now that we've got this side cut and bent, if you want, we could have put one side over the other one a little bit and folded it that way and it made a different shape out of it. So um, this was the principle that, that I was working on and thinking on when I uh, was designing and developing this. Now let's say you wanted to cut this side. Well, we'll use a pair of scissors to cut this one. Here I've cut a little freehand notch out of this. To make a perfectly uh, straight angle, we'll, all we'll do is we'll bend it back in the opposite direction of what we want. And then we start at the bottom and we'll just pinch it and crease it coming up the side. From there, we can turn it around, put one side over the other side so that we can uh, bring it over here and then just keep that bend. Any angle we want, we can create. And then when I pull it back into about there, there we go. Now, we're still not, we're not finished. We can still, I can cut a little piece straight out of this. And if I want, I can go this way. Or I can go this way. You know, I can do all kinds of things. I can bring that side back over, cut this off altogether. I can pick my blade and if I don't want all that 
I can just cut it all right off. And there you go. So this is a unique material and the design of it makes it even more useful for things that I was involved with when I was doing picture frames. For example, if I wanted to go around this corner, I could have easily had that inside and went around the corner. And this would be a frame liner or a frame fillet and this could extend all the way up to what we cut out on the other side. This substrate comes as long as I want. The longest I usually have done is nine foot, but the majority of that I do is half that, which is 54 inch. And I chose 54 inches because it's easier and less expensive to ship it. Once you get over 59 inches, it really gets expensive to ship. And shipping just one or two pieces just isn't practical to ship this. I put it in three inch tube or five inch boxes. For example, when I stack these together, a hundred of them takes up five inches by five inches. So once you get into higher quantities, it's easier to ship it around the country, but shipping one or two and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So um, if you like what you see, contact uh, your local retailer. And if you want him to bring some of this in, you can. So if you wanted to see how it would look if you continued on and you can make all kinds of things out of it. This is, accepts a glue gun or a staple or tapes and all sorts of things. You can, you can spray paint this material with acrylic sprays. You can spray it with lacquer sprays. This is waterproof. It resists most chemicals. The two chemicals that will damage this are acetone that like you use in fingernail polish cleanup and ketone which is even stronger than the acetone so as long as you stay away from those and use either a acrylic spray or use a lacquer spray you'd have no problems you can do so many interesting designs with paint and films and appliques and you name it. I've even taken images that I wanted and I've actually printed them on a laser printer and I use transparent adhesive and just applied it. It looks beautiful. There are things that you can do with this molding and material that you can't do with any other material that exists. I know because I've had to research everything dating all the way back to the 15th century to see if anybody's had anything like this.